Welcome to Talking Points. I'm Brian Kelly, the Points Guy, and today we're going to dive deep into the world of Virgin. Uh, today we have Sir Richard Branson here himself, the founder of the Virgin Group of Companies, and I recently read his first autobiography, and as successful of an entrepreneur he is, what attracts me the most uh, to Mr. Branson is the fact that he gives so much back through his companies, just like we do at the Points Guy. So, Sir Richard Branson, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. Today was a big day. You received your Hollywood <laughs> Walk of Fame star. How did that feel today? Oh, it's, um, it, it's, a, it's a delightful, fun uh, accolade. And I think getting it outside the Guinness World uh, Records uh, Museum is quite fun because uh, I spent quite a lot of my life trying to break world records. and. Uh, and, and I didn't. And I didn't kill myself. So yeah, I know some of those stories are <laughs> quite harrowing. Uh, yeah, no, but, but and, and yeah. are you officially done with any crazy journeys, or is the next? I don't think officially done because I, I, I'm, I'm known as Doctor Yes, and I can't resist the challenge. <laughs> so if somebody uh, has an earth-shattering challenge, it's likely I'll say yes. Um, but uh, my next trip will be into space, and and um, that that we, I will not do until we've got the spaceship absolutely in sound and safe. Cool, I'm excited to, we're gonna talk a little bit about Virgin Galactic at the end, but today we just wanna talk a little bit about, so music, you've had a long history with the label, and today you're announcing um, Virgin Festivals, um, and getting back into that live music experience, um, what's different about Virgin, Virgin Fest? Um, well, uh, I'm basically um, supporting Jason Feltz, who's uh, brilliant at, um, at, at creating wonderful festivals, and, um, and, and he runs a company for us called Virgin Produced. Um, and um, basically what we're, what we're going to try to do with Virgin Fest is, is make it, you know, obviously great music, but um, people are not always going to like what's on stage when they're, when they're at the festival. So uh, we're going to surprise people with lots of wonderful things going on in the festival so that if you're not enjoying the music you can go and do something else and um, and we're going to also uh, you know make sure that the things that always annoy you about festivals mm -hmm. like you know the quality of the toilets or, yeah I was just going to um, say that uh, uh, are, you know are are really nice. And so you're going to have Toto toilets from <laughs> Japan shipped in. Just we're, 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 it, it's a simple thing. <laughs> uh, we all we all end up there at yeah. least once or twice, or oh, actually on a festival, maybe three or four times. And um, so, uh, but little getting get you know, like Virgin prides itself, as you know, with getting all those little details right, and and they're important. So the first festival we can expect to see is in 2019. Can you give any any hints about where it would be in the U.S. or the sort think, of acts you're looking I, for? I think that we'll start on the West Coast and uh, and see how it goes, and then uh, yeah, and then maybe um, go go to the East Coast and then Mid America. And so speaking of expansion across America, so we're sad at the Point Sky to see the Virgin America brand, you know, get gobbled up, but. Uh, that's not the last we're going to see in the travel industry. So I'm super excited. I'm not a cruiser myself, and I love when you say that your new Virgin Voyages, it's not cruising, it's a voyage. What, um, when, it, when are Virgin Voyages going to take off, and what can consumers expect? Um, well, I too was sad about Virgin America. I, I didn't actually own 100% of the company, Due and therefore those crazy rules. It, it, got, it, 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 it got sold. And, and I was very, very sad to see Alaska just destroying what was a great company. Um, uh, instead of saying, wow, we bought this great company, let's yeah. keep it. I mean, it was bizarre. Culture, but anyway, yeah. um, uh, um, the Virgin Voyages, uh, I, I've never been on a cruise ship. I've never really wanted to go on a cruise yeah. ship. Uh, so I thought, you know, let's get a blank sheet of paper and let's try to create the kind of cruise ship that myself and my friends would love to go on. And. Uh, and we got all the best designers and innovators from across the various Virgin companies. Uh, and these beautiful cruise ships are being built in Italy. You know, we're hopefully, hopefully going to make the kind of cruise ship you're not going to want to get off, yeah. even, if, even if you go into a port. Um, so, uh, so in terms of entertainment, a little bit more than a hokey cabaret act at night? And, yeah, I you know. mean, it, 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 we've got, you know, beautiful um, uh, music halls and dance, uh, dance places and cinemas and... You know, we have got no buffets where, you know, and, and uh, again, just try to think of all the things that people right. hate about cruises and get, get them right. Cool. Well, I'm excited to try them out because I myself am not. I, I'm too tall. I, on a cruise ship, I'm six foot seven. Uh, on a recent 
conference that I was at, I stood up and the, the oh. crown of my head like smashed into the exit sign. So uh, yeah, well, you might, you, you must, I, might, uh, I mean, like, sitting here looking up, it's, 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 it's quite, <laughs> daunting, quite daunting. Um, okay, so I'm a plane geek. You're a plane geek. I love the story about you and Virgin Atlantic. You calling up Boeing and just getting a 747. Um, and I love, so, you know, the, the queen of the skies, she's a beauty, the 747, but I'm an A380 guy. I love the A380. It's the quietest plane in the sky. You know, it, I feel small on it. And I loved reading in your book when you went for the opening of, or the, the inaugural launch of the A380, that you had plans for the Virgin Atlantic A380 with the casino on board. And I'm a little bit of a degenerate gambler, so I actually, like, lost my breath while reading that chapter. But it seems as a Virgin Atlantic, I know the economics are really tough on the A380. Is there any chance, I know they kind of slipped off the purchase books for Virgin, but is there any chance we could see a Virgin Atlantic A380? Let me tell you my casino story, and then we'll come back to the <laughs> A380. So, my kids reached the age of 18, and I decided to teach them how you know, why gambling in a casino was not a good idea. So I took them to the Hard Rock in, in um, Vegas. I gave them $250 each, and I had $250. We quickly lost it on the roulette table. I took them <laughs> Black to the, and red. I, I, yeah, yeah, I took them to the bar, and I told them, I told you so. We leave the bar half an hour later, we pass the same table, and everybody at that table stands up and claps. And I look at this table, and there's this massive pile of chips. And it, it turned out I'd left a chip uh, on a number which had doubled and doubled and doubled and doubled. Oh, because you just... Uh, so, so, so I said to the kids, look, this is just, this is not normal. And I quickly gave all the money away to all the people at the table and said, you know, thank you yeah. for telling us. Um, and I said as we left, look, you know, if you, you can buy a casino, but you definitely should not play in a casino. Anyway, last week, um, we ended up uh, going back to the Hard Rock. Uh, casino in Las Vegas, having bought it, so okay. they're now allowed in, but, allowed <laughs> but play, you so. still don't encourage them to <laughs> play. It was, it was a fun I, I take a different road with my. I love blackjack yeah. and just you know playing for fun and yeah. you know. You so can play. You can play at the Hard Rock. That's I will, fine. We don't mind taking. When, the money. when, when <laughs> is it going to be uh, a Virgin Casino? Yeah. in about four or five months time. Oh wow, yeah. that's a pretty quick turnaround. Yeah. yeah, so we got it. It's a great site, but it just needs um, yeah, it needs a bit of work done on it and. Um, yeah, we can make it. A, we can make it a really. I mean, it used to be a really fun place. We can make it a real fun place again. Well, you've dodged my question on the A380. Oh, the A380. Chance. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no. I mean, they're they're, they're great planes if yeah. they're full all the time. Yeah. Uh, if they're not full, uh, they burn burn up a lot of fuel, and uh, and it's difficult to make money. And so things like the 787s or the yeah. the, the A350 is a beautiful yeah. plane. Um, uh, I love, I'd love yeah. the 747, but um, that's definitely come to the end of its time. And speaking of the A350, you guys are going to be taking uh, delivery, and the world is, you know, aviation world, myself included, is kind of waiting with bated breath on the new, is, is there going to be a new generation of Virgin business class? Because the current business class, see, I'm too big for. I call it the birdcage a little bit. It's, and it was revolutionary when it was launched. Do you, is there going to be a new generation, you know? Um, I, we're, always, we're always innovating. Um, I mean, the, the Virgin Upper Class product is not that far off. I mean, it's yeah. only an inch or two off uh, other airlines' first class, and, yeah. and yet we charge a business class fare yeah. for it. So uh, it saves people a lot of money. Uh, right. There aren't many six foot seven yeah, I know. people. Um, <laughs> um, I, I still like it. I still fly Virgin. But. Yeah, well, you could fly. We could also maybe cut the off the cut the, yeah maybe cut maybe sell somewhere i can buy two and then you just put we the put, we divider put, we could, down we could, we could get one of those mag magicians you could just cut your cut your cut your feet off and, and you'll be fine <laughs> <laughs> speaking of other airline is there an airline and this comes from our readers is there an airline non-virgin owned that you admire uh the most of um well look i uh i like the i like the middle east airlines mm -hmm. um or the far east airlines um I mean, of the American carriers, um, we ended up um, uh, tying up with Delta Airlines, um, and I think of the big airlines, they've done you know they've done the best to you know it's a big massive company they've yeah. had to pull around. Their new their new um, A three fifty suites really nice. Yeah, and they they're, they're definitely are trying, and I think you know the reason they partnered up with us was to see if we could you know we could um, some some of what we some of the best bits that yeah. we've got we could rub off on them. So. Um, so, uh, by no means perfect, and nor are we, but I think that they're definitely coming, coming, coming on. Um, but, um, 
but obviously, look, you know, it's Singapore Airlines and Emirates, oh, yeah. and you know, they're 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 real class. Well, you fly. Well, I guess Virgin flies to South Africa. So do you you fly Virgin whenever possible. Or? Yeah. No, I mean, if 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 uh, it's a long a long flight, uh, I'll always be on a Virgin Atlantic plane or a Virgin. Aust I've just been in Australia on a Virgin Australia plane. Uh, just did Virgin Australia from LA to um, yeah. uh, from Sydney to LA. Um, and it's obviously a pleasure. And uh, on my, my star today, a lot of the cabin crew were on they the plane looked, with that. They <laughs> looked sharp as can be. Yeah, yeah. And then it's the last thing about airlines. So loyalty, so the, at the points guy, we teach our readers how to maximize loyalty points to get you know, travel the world. And the stories yeah. are amazing. When you created Flying Club, uh, and when you think about loyalty with all your businesses, like what, do you, what are the key things that drive you? I think the, what we're trying to do is we're just launching a new uh, program called the Red Program out of uh, to try to pull all the various Virgin companies together so that you know people are not just getting you know miles for flying on our airlines but they're going to get miles if they're using our trains or um, our health clubs or you know mm -hmm. and and, um, and you know and and you know so if we're clever we could we people will be able to fly for almost nothing if they want to yeah. use their use it or they may be able to go to space if yeah they, if, uh, one day and um, so um, uh, but um, but loyalty programs are addict are addictions as you know noted otherwise, you, <laughs> otherwise most likely you wouldn't be in business yeah um, and what are you, you calling you're, me you're, are you calling me poor you'll get <laughs> you'll get no, people, I heard you're, that you're, there was a little bit of shame you'll, you'll get people uh, <laughs> You'll get people flying on the crappiest airline yeah. just just to get points, yeah. um, and um, so what we've got to do is make sure they, they we have our, our points as as uh, good as the airline, so they, yeah. they they can fly on a good airline using points. Um, so I know you tried to buy the I never got to fly the Concorde. We actually have seats in our office. My office chair is from uh, the Air France mm -hmm. Concorde. You know, you, they wouldn't sell them to you. Do you ever think we'll see, A, another Concorde in the air, even I know you're part of the group that's trying to get one of them back up airworthy, or do you, and then a supersonic commercial travel, is that feasible, do you think? Well, one of the reasons we went into space travel was to be able to develop um, a, a space plane that could be expanded and then turned into a point-to-point. -point. Um, our spaceship, uh, we'll be traveling at three times the speed of sound uh, into space in the next few weeks. Will you hear that boom from Earth, like over the desert? Uh, you shouldn't hear it, I think, but yeah. um, uh, it's, it, um, you know, it's straight up and I, I don't think you'll, get, you'll hear the boom, um, but we'll see. Um, but, um, uh, but once we've achieved uh, our, our dream of putting people into space, then Putting people, you know, yeah. helping people travel point to point at tremendous speeds is something that Virgin would love to accomplish. Um, so, Virgin Galactic, you're weeks away from a pretty significant launch. Um, I actually was going, uh, I had sold my business and was going to do Virgin Galactic in 2014. It was like right before the, the issue that happened. Mm -hmm. um, but I know several friends who are on the wait list. What's What's the actual, from consumer perspective, like with Virgin Galactic, what needs to happen before there are frequent trips uh, and that you know 700 person waiting list actually starts um, moving? So, uh, as I say, we're, we're day, days, uh, you know, that many, that many weeks away from uh, Virgin Galactic being in space. Um, then we'll do another sort of- Because it just hit, you're going to go to 170,000 square feet or 100,000? Um, we'll, 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 we'll go into space. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll um, uh, it'll be something like a you know, four hour round trip yeah. um, and, um, uh, and, then, uh, and then we'll obviously do a, a number of test flights then uh, in the first half of next year I'll go into space and wow. then we'll move the whole operation to New, Me New Mexico where we have a beautiful spaceport and then we'll start um, taking people into space. And so for people today who have some cash to burn you can, you can sign up for Virgin Galactic today yeah, we we have froze the signing up at 750 people. Um, we w once we've actually been into space, we're going to open that open up again, and um, uh, so you know, in, in a month or two's time, keep your eyes open and watch this space. <laughs> no pun intended. All right, some final rapid fire questions. Are you a window or aisle seat guy? I love the window. I love the uh, w watching the. Northern Lights out of a Virgin Atlantic plane. That's, I just saw them uh, going to Tokyo recently. Yeah, it was incredible. out of this world. Uh, best meal you've ever had on an airplane? 
Um, I think it was at the at the bar on the Virgin Atlantic flight going to Tokyo. Um, uh, Japanese food and the nice thing about Virgin is you can actually go and uh, get out of your seat and go and sit at the bar and talk to people. Yeah. Final question. So you inspire a lot of people, especially we got a lot of questions from young people. So I know it's hard to whittle it down to one piece of advice, but to a young person looking to get into aviation or even you know entrepreneurship, what, what piece of advice would you give them? Uh, if they're trying to get into entrepreneurship, um, surround yourself with people better than you. Um, uh, uh, motivate them, praise them, love them, uh, and create something that they're all going to be proud of and you're going to be proud of, and, and just go for it. Very cool. Well, congratulations on your Thank star you. today and all your new ventures, Great. and uh, I look forward to going to space one day. And to you too. Cheers.